I've just fit the gas bottle and I think it's time to actually see if the hob works. This is pretty terrifying, I must say. Well, hi there, welcome back to A Bus and Beyond. And today I'm just doing a few more jobs in the van. Um, I've just been looking at trying to work out what tap I'm going to have for the sink. Obviously, it'd be a lot easier if I just could pick a domestic tap, which might be the way to go. I just need to work out how they would connect from the bottom of that tap, obviously the pipes from the tap, onto the rest of the John Guest 12 mil system that I've put in. Currently, you can see I've got the pipe to here. I need to work out roughly how I'm going to route it across. I'm going to have we're going to have drawers here. Um, but then yes, the pipe is going to come in through the side of the kitchen and then up into you can sort of see the bottom of the sink and it's going to I think I'm going to have to have it this side ideally. I could have it that side, but I'm going to this is all going to be battened on here and all built up and I think I'm going to have a socket here which would be quite handy just to plug I don't know kettle in and that kind of thing so I I don't really want to take up the space here with the tap that's too tight I think because yeah that's way too tight because it's a undermounted sink the sink obviously actually goes a bit further in to like here sort of thing all the way around so I can't obviously drill a hole here. I think here is gonna be best. What would be great if I did have the tap here is I'd be able to, when well, the door's open, obviously rotate it round and then actually maybe have an extension. You know one of those ones that where the actual um, tap bit pulls out and then you could use it outside if you're ever gonna do that. I'm not sure whether you would or not, but at least it would give me the option. So I'm going to have a, I'm actually going to go to B&Q and have a look to see what sort of size they are um, and just see maybe about whether a domestic one would work here. I know it needs to be sort of no bigger than about 55 mil uh, diameter to fit there and then the reach of the tap obviously if it if it curves over needs to be sort of no less than 17 centimeters across here so let's jump in the car and go and have a look just parked up outside tool station because there's a few bits i need and look there's an extra long wheelbase. You don't see many extra long wheelbase crafters around. <laughs> the problem is all the boxes are sealed, alarmed, so I can't actually have a look to see how they're all connected. So I had a quick look in B and Q. Um, I think the issue, well, I can't, I can't actually see underneath any of the tabs because of the way the display setup is, but. Um, They've got obviously loads of them in boxes, but I can't really, I can't open them because they're all sealed. On the instructions, it shows you the exact dimensions, which is quite useful. A lot of them are a good size. They have um, half inch female screw attachments on the bottom, but I'm not sure how long, they have big hoses on the bottom. I'm not sure how long those hoses are either. A bit concerned that the hoses will be really long. Basically, if you buy an actual camper van tap, it has a um, just a push fit 12 mil fitting, so it would all my my pipe would just go straight up into the actual um, fit into the actual hose of the tap. So it'd be really straightforward. I don't think it'd be too much of an issue. I can just use an adapter, a half inch to push fit adapter, and maybe just plug that in. Uh, but yeah, I just don't know a couple of things. I don't know how long the actual thread is to screw it in because obviously domestic kitchen worktops are quite thick compared to campervan worktops so I don't want to 
Well, obviously I could buy it, open it. If it's no good, I could just take it back. So I do also need to chat to Lizzie to work out whether we need to go silver brushed sort of silver color or black. I'm not sure what color. Obviously the hob is black, but then the sink is silver. And yeah, I'll see what Lizzie says. <laughs> Right, well I picked up a few bits anyway. Um, obviously not entirely sure about the tap just yet, but I picked up a few bits to do the gas. Uh, some 90 degree elbows. A pipe cutter. Isolation valve. And then some actual gas pipe as well. So I'm going to be running it all in 8mm uh, copper pipe. You have to run it in rigid pipe in a camper van. Uh, so I've got a load of yeah 8mm pipe. Um, I wanted to see actually how... I'm a bit concerned that I've got the wrong size adapter for this. This is the bottom of the hob, all the pipe work and everything. And this is where it's connected. Uh, maybe that is 8mm actually, that's 8mm there, yeah maybe it is, yeah so this is the 90, 90 degree bend, does the olive fit on, yes it does, that's good, so uh, yeah it is the right size, then it will go straight in, yeah straight into a 90 degree bend and down and then um, it needs to run. This is where it will be in the in the hob. So as you look at it, it it exits out this bottom corner. I think I'm then going to um, run it. Well, I wondered about clipping it to the the front of the kitchen and going all the way along that way. It's going to be quite hard to get access actually to actually fix it all to the side but it's either that or well either or really I can either go that way clip it along essentially the front would be clipped like obviously not the front but you know the back of the front along there and then round and exit out the back of the kitchen or I could go the other way I could go along the back there but obviously all the tap and everything is going to be there Maybe that's not too much of an issue actually. I need to be able to screw the pipe to the to something at regular intervals. So I basically need to work out that really. I'm just experimenting at the minute with the copper pipe and the cutter and things like that. I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to get uh, well run the copper pipe. I've got a pipe bender. See how that works. Um, let's take it nice and slowly, and hopefully. Hmm. That seems to have worked okay. There you go, just rotates around to the 90 degree bit. And there you have it. Looks all right, doesn't it? It's not the easiest thing to measure exactly where where you want the bend on the the pipe but that looks like that will work quite well actually I plan to come down from the hob into a 90 degree bend and then very soon after that have the isolator then I've got um, obviously a join for the isolator a join for the hob and then I'm hoping I can get away with having as long a run as possible potentially even all the way into the um, gas locker box which is going to be just like where the bed starts and then just minimize the risk of leaks don't we I've never done gas plumbing before so this is definitely a first for me 
I'm hoping as well I can probably connect this first bit so outside of maybe I can do it here because it's essentially going to go like that you put your outer nut on then your olive and just make sure the olive is straight inside there and then on the pipe I'm going to get this all checked by a plumber that I know who is gas safe registered before I take the family away in it. <laughs> right, I'm hoping then that if I just flip that over and go for something like that. Oh, not bad. I just need to just go out a little bit more. Right, I'm hoping you'll be able to see in here. So you can see how the gas pipe drops down and then it's going to run along the front there. I now need to fit an isolator in there. So I'm actually going to have to cut the pipe a bit just because I won't, there's no way I'll get a screwdriver in with the sink in the way. Whereas from here, I should be able to get a screwdriver to screw into the side here, making sure I do not go through it. <laughs> because basically this um, this isolation, isolator needs to be screwed to the wall. Right, so what I've done is I've got an elbow piece that's quite tightly done up. Then obviously I've put a bend in the actual pipe into the isolator. I've loosely tightened that up. Well, loosely tightened, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I've loosely done that up. Um, I just basically need to see how this falls, actually, when I put this back in the hole. I have a feeling, that, oh yes, that is good. Right, can you see the isolator there? Yeah, that's good. I like that, that fits well. I just need to work out how I can get a screwdriver in there and screw that in place. Uh, but yeah, that, that's good. And what I like is the fact that to isolate it, all you'll have to do is pull the drawer out and you can feel underneath where the isolator is. worried because um, one of the bends I did earlier it flattened the pipe I did not want to go down that route of it not being like a, a suitable enough um, pipe bender but it, it, it's actually working I think I went a bit too fast on that last one so we've got a curve <laughs> two curves and then it goes down and needs to go back She just have the gas pipe just going. Whew. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> right, well, the pipe is going to be in the right place, roughly. It then runs down the, down the back there, which I'll obviously have to clip in place and then pops back out 
as a, a sort of coil again. <laughs> so I've nipped up the connections underneath here. I've just ordered some um, like rubber, rubber coated, like rubber mounted um, P clips. So when I actually secure the pipe to the inside of the kitchen, it'll have rubber touching the copper, so it'll keep it nice and um, secure from any, any vibrations or anything like that. Right now, what I've just done is I've just cut down the um, fixings for the actual hob. They were too long, so I've just cut them down. And I'm just trying to screw them in underneath. Put a couple of cables, a wider a cable into the bottom of this as well, which will be eventually attached to something, which will um, give us a 12 volt igniter so that when you push it down and turn the hob on, it will go and actually light the gas. What was nice was the fact that eight mil gas pipes are obviously fairly common, so I could actually get all this stuff from Screwfix. Unlike 12 mil water fixings, you have to order them online. It's a real pain. So I started doing a, a few bits and bobs with the actual water supply this morning, but yeah, I need to wait for more deliveries. I need a few more isolators and things like that. Okay, that's it mounted back in, which is good. Well, it's another new day and it's blooming freezing. It's actually snowing, like British style snowing. So not really snowing, but it's actually snowing outside. It's freezing. I've done all I can with the gas stuff for now, because I've ordered a gas locker. When that arrives, I'll get the gas pipe all finished off and put into the gas locker. So we'll have a look at that in a later video. Uh, but now what I want to do is, I want to start framing up around the bottom here. Get that all boarded in so it's all nicely hidden. Who needs a workbench when you've got three wheelie bins? <laughs> so I bought this big bit of 12 mil hardwood ply and that's what I'm going to use to board it all in. I should really use, obviously, lightweight furniture board, but it's really quite expensive. This wasn't too expensive. So, um, yeah, I'm going to cut that and sort of screw that all into the actual framework of the rock and roll bed. And then once that's done, we'll paint that and it should look a lot nicer. turn the camera on and it's saying it has a little like charger handle and it can't charge it because it says it's too cold Whew. wow anyway i've built a frame um around the sort of the border and everything like that um just a basic frame screwed it down to the floor and then i need to put a side on this side 
I've just done this for, um, bit of boarding. I put a hole in it where the seat belt um, will sort of route through that hole. And it also gives enough room for the actual bolt that holds the seat belt to the uh, bed. It, it sort of uh, allows that to swivel still. Well, this is going well. I'm still cutting stuff in the snow now. Brilliant. But um, yeah, I had to build the board again because, again, scribing that gets me every single time. I had to just do a little bit of a scrub just to make it so it's lovely and neat against the board at the front. And I forgot that I'd already chopped the board to the right size. So as soon as I scribed a bit off it, it was then too short. But now it actually looks better anyway. It, um, it meets better at the end here and that hole is better there for the um, seat belt as well. So I just need to get this screwed to the frame. I've left a, a gap here. Um, I need to make it look a bit, I need to make it look a bit tidier, uh, but then uh, essentially what eventually will be there is a board that will go over the top, which you'll just be able to lift off to get to this stuff, but at least then it'll be a bit quieter when it's all running with a board on the top. But that's for another day. I need to get this bit screwed back first. Good, that's a good one. Well, what a surprise, another job that took far longer than it probably should have done. Ah. That's generally the theme. That's what we should have called the channel. Why does it always take longer than it should have done? However, the framing that I wanted to get done is done. Obviously the seat is pretty mucky now because of all the sawdust. Uh, so it just needs a bit of a, probably a light sanding. Although I have sanded all the edges as I've gone around and uh, as I've cut the boards. But yeah, it's got a little hole there for the seat belt, which works quite well. Um, and obviously I can't go any higher than that with the board because it is a sliding seat so it needs that space to slide and then I also need to cut a hole in there because that's where the outlet for the heater will go I've also not bothered boarding this bit I don't think I'll need to because the shower unit should go here so that'll be a whole board in itself which will kind of act as boarding for that as I put that down that's kind of where it sits anyway so I'm going to build this bit up here and create a sort of um, a, a sort of actual enclosure for all this so you don't see the boiler but we'll look at that on another day right I really want this gas locker to arrive so I can finish off the gas hob hopefully that'll arrive tomorrow Well, that's good the gas locker has arrived this is from autocraft i think they're called autocraft conversions maybe um so that's where i plan to put it but not that orientation i plan to actually face it backwards just because it's slightly um shorter width than it is depth so i need a bit of space against this edge so that I can put a door behind and things like that and then, you know a door for this bit here this will need a door so it's going to go that way um, but I need to work out I need to put a dropout vent in the bottom so I need to work out exactly where I can do that uh, which means getting underneath and looking at the wheel arch and yeah, I imagine, obviously, with the wheel arch being there, there's going to be quite a lot of suspension and axle and stuff in the way. So hopefully, that's going to be okay there. I wonder 
I'm going to put it, oop, I'm going to put it sort of here or there. I think it's going to have to be a bit further back. Yeah, that should work. So there's the curve, obviously, that's the front of the curve. So I've got leeway to move this forwards and backwards. I've just got to get the, obviously, the the further the back, the further back the better, but, but I think, yeah, pretty much where I thought would be about right. Obviously I'll drill a small pilot hole first. So this is the dropout vent I need to install. I need to drill a decent sized hole in the bottom um, and pop it straight, straight through. There we go, it has come through and in a good spot. Result. So what I've been doing is I've just been building up the gas locker. It needed a few bits doing, it just comes as the bare metal box. It does come with everything, which is quite good. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested in getting this particular setup. It's quite good. From what I can see, um, yeah, it's just getting all the metal filings out, it's not very easy. But I've drilled a big hole in the bottom, which is for that to um, the dropout vent to go through. I've also just touched up around with some green paint, but I've got most of it on me, as you can see. <laughs> I've also touched up the hole, obviously, underneath the chassis as well, because you need to make sure you protect that, otherwise it'll go rusty. I've also drilled holes for where the screws will go through to actually fix this down to the ground. You then also need to put the um, bracket in for the strap, which holds the gas bottle in place. And then we have the actual regulator pipe. So you can see the regulator there. It's connected via a hose that goes up and into uh, an adapter that goes from a hose connection through this push fit fitting that will go onto my 8mm gas pipe. Now all I need to do is fix this actually into here. I might just put a little bit of sealant around the bottom just to make sure nothing leaks. If it is going to leak it only goes down through the bottom of the van. And then I need to get this whole locker actually mounted in the in the van. Just gonna be using these tech screws to mount it to the van. Right, well the gas locker's put in, installed. I had to take the bracket off that has the strap on because I couldn't get to the screws at the back. So I'd take that off and then back, put it back on again. But um, yeah, it's all in. It just needs a bit of a hoover because it's hard to get the stuff out. It's got the, obviously the pipe work will go from here and along and I'm gonna put a bit of a, an extra bit of wood in, in the back here, I think, just so that it, I've got something to secure the a gas pipe too as it roots off towards the kitchen but yeah the dropout is in there I just need to um, put something underneath to stop uh, maybe another bit of pipe work from underneath just to make sure that water doesn't get up and in inside the actual wooden floor but um, yeah it's just blooming tight in here but yeah at least it's in there and I'm hoping then that you know, you'd be able to access the gas bottle from that side or from um, the, the garage, probably easier from the garage, but at least the door doesn't have any hinges, so you can just remove it, which makes it a bit easier to get the gas bottle in and out. But don't forget the gas is only for cooking. Um, so I know it's only a small gas bottle, but we're only using it for the hob. It's not for the heating or anything like that. So I think it's actually gonna be, it, it'll last ages. It always did in our California. That's why we wanted to go with this really. It's really, really good and it's, um, we like cooking with gas. So anyway, I actually have to go to work this afternoon. So over the next couple of days, I'm gonna hopefully get the rest of the pipe work all plumbed in. And then and then a friend of mine who is a plumber is going to uh, pressure test it all for me and make sure that I've not done it completely wrong. 
uh, and then hopefully we should be able to get some gas to the hob, which would be quite nice. Well, I've just had my friend Danny, who fortunately is a plumber, just come and pressure test the gas system. And yet he had to, it's amazing. I thought I tightened those eight mil joints up nice and tight, but yeah, I was really scared because it feels like such fragile pipe work. So I didn't want to do it too tight. Anyway, he came, cranked it right up and um, pressure tested it to way above what the system is ever going to be run at just to make sure there's no leaks. And there were a few leaks, so he tightened them all up. He used um, like a leak spray as well, which you spray on, look for bubbles and yeah, it's now all good. So I've just um, I've just fit the gas bottle, and I think it's time to actually see if the hob works. This is pretty terrifying, I must say. Right, I'll just show you what happens though. The gas locker has been all drilled in with a dropout vent that you've seen. The gas pipe goes up, clipped to the wall, and through the bulkhead uh, where the garage is, and it will then go. It go then goes along here, clipped to the wall down underneath and then back up through the kitchen. You can see it clipped to the back there. And then it runs along this part of the kitchen. There's an isolator just in here, which is switched off at the minute. And it goes up and into the hob. Now I haven't actually um, sorted out the electric igniter yet. The wire is in, but it's not connected at the other end. So I will have to manually light it with that. That's a bit scary actually doing it in here. There's no leaks. I've got to tell myself there is no leaks. We're okay. But I'm going to turn the isolator on and see if I can get gas coming through the actual hob. Well, I can't smell gas. But then my sense of smell isn't very good anyway. Oh, I can hear something coming through. Oh, I'm scared. I suppose I've got to purge a bit of the air through because there'll be a lot of air in the system from when he tested it. Oh yeah, you can hear that that sounds like air. Right, that smells like gas now. So I'm just gonna wait a second before it blows up in my face when I light it. But that's a good sign, it smells like gas. Gas is getting to the hob. This is gonna be another real big milestone. I hope you understand that. You know, this is quite quite a big thing. One was the diesel heater. That was a huge, huge step. Then we, you know, we've got electrics in here, another massive step. But once this works, we will actually be able to cook in here. And that is a real, real big step. In fact, I don't even know which hobs, which I might've been trying to light the wrong one. Go on, go on, keep going, keep going. Bit of air in there. Right. It's not, I think there's still quite a bit of air in the system. Oh, that one looks good. See, that one looks loads better now. That one's slowly getting there. That looks nice and steady, doesn't it? That one's still getting there. Yeah, it's getting better. I think we're getting there. Yeah, look at that. That's good, isn't it? That's good. That's They're both properly lit. That's gas, isn't it? That's working. That is a burner. It's warm. <laughs> yes! Another another step done. Yes! Oh, get in! Get in! That's now sounding really good. That is now just like a nice clean burn. There isn't the, the popping and the crackling. I think it's just getting rid of all that air through the system, which I didn't think would be much at all because it's only a short run, but we have gas. We have a burner. We can cook in the van. <laughs> yes. Right. 
Well, I am so, so pleased. I'm so, so pleased. That is a massive, massive step. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. See me battle to be a gas plumber this time. What would it be next time? Probably water plumber, carpenter, joiner, who knows? But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Please do consider subscribing because it really, really helps the channel out. It helps keep me motivated to keep bringing you content like this. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider sharing it as well if you want to show people how not to do things. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.